Hello everyone, welcome back to Paper Made Me Do It. I'm here with another unboxing video today. This is of a B6 Stology notebook and a few different notebooks from Archer and Olive. So the purpose of this order was to find a new notebook because I've been planning to start a new bullet journal for the month of June just to try something different again and have a new creative outlet. So I couldn't decide between the B6 Stology or the B6 Archer and Olive, so I decided to get both. This is the Stology and the packaging is very simple. It just comes with a little belly band and I ordered it online from Amazon. It has a soft cover in black and then some logos embossed near the spine. And the interior is just 368 pages of a faint square grid um, imprinted. I figured whichever one of these notebooks I don't use for the initial bullet journal will get used for something else. Y'all know I can always find a use for some paper. <laughs> now there are uh, months and dates imprinted very small and faint at the top of each page but because of the size, um, I probably won't be using that feature. Now these are the Archer and Olive notebooks. This is my first purchase from that brand. They have beautiful packaging. The boxes that they come in are very sturdy and part of the logo is in gold foil. And this first notebook that I'm opening here is actually a sketchbook. So this was, you know, never in the running, so to speak, for my bullet journal. I wanted to try their sketchbook. It does have an intro page at the beginning of the book. And then on the inside, instead of a square grid or dot grid, the sketchbook is just solid blank white paper. It is the 160 GSM thick paper that this brand is known for and it has a ribbon bookmark with a cute little charm of the company logo on one end. And there's also a large pocket in the back like most bullet journals have these days. I forgot to take a shot of that. Now, this is a B6. It's not a B6 slim. It is a full B6, so approximately five by seven. It has a cloth kind of linen-like cover and it has that same intro page. And then I chose a dot grid for the interior. It has a pocket in the back as well. I'm just showing here side by side. Um, these are both advertised to be full B6, but the Stology notebook is just a hair bigger, just a tiny bit, like less than a quarter of an inch. And so I got two of the B6 um, notebooks to try because I just couldn't choose between both of these beautiful covers. Um, this one, they all have that same coordinating color ribbon bookmark and then the little logo charm on the bottom. And now I'm going directly in to the ink test. I'd still, after I flipped through and you know held each notebook in my hand, I just couldn't decide which one to start the bullet journal in. So I thought that an ink test would be an informative, you know, way to help me decide <laughs> if one paper performed um, quite differently than the other. So I'm just taking some stamps here and some Versa Magic ink and making a little bit of a title page here. And this is toward the very end of the notebook, the last couple of pages. So I test a lot of pens here. Papermate Ink Joy Gel 0 0.7 is the first. Then a Pigma Micron 05, a Tombow Mono Drawing Pen 03, and a Tombow Fudonosuke, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but the hard tip uh, brush pen. And then the same kind of partner pen in the soft tip. An Eversharp Symphony Fountain Pen. This is a Flex Fountain Pen. And I did notice that the line variation faded a bit, not necessarily faded, but kind of soaked into the paper. This is a Zebra Sarasa clip pen in caramel, a Lamy 2000 extra fine fountain pen in Orochizuku Suyoro ink, 
a Pilot Vanishing Point Fountain Pen in a medium nib with an Ackerman dark blue ink. I didn't have time, or not time, but space to write the name. A Pelican Fountain Pen M200 with Apache Sunset. And I noticed the same thing, that the line variation is not pronounced here because this paper is so thick, it just kind of soaks the ink up. Pelican M400 in a fine nib with Kyono Oto number no. 4 ink. Pelican M800 in extra fine with Organic Studios Oscars Copper. Y Studio Brassing Fountain Pen in a fine nib with Robert Oster Avocado ink. Pilot Kakuno in a fine nib with the Namiki Black ink. And it was not as crisp as I expected. The Muji Fountain Pen with a fine nib and the Diamine Syrah ink. Pilot Prera fine nib in the Namiki Black ink. Twisby Mini an extra fine with Noodler's Black ink. Twisby Eco with a fine nib in Noodler's Apache Sunset. Twisby Eco in a bold nib or broad nib with Orochizuku Benzitan ink. Twisby Eco with a medium nib in Orochizuku Momiji. Then I went in with a Pigma Micron in the 01 size and finished the test with a Pigma Micron in the 005, which is the tiniest point that they offer. So on the next page, I decided to test my Sharpie brush pens because I like to do lettering with them quite a bit. So I went in with yellow, orange, coral, hot pink, red, purple, light blue, blue, green, and then brown. And followed up with the Zebra Mild Liner Brush Highlighters. Orange, gold, pink, vermilion, red, magenta, violet, blue, smoke blue, dark blue, green, blue green, gray, and brown. So that's how they all look on this bright white paper. This is not a cream paper, this is a white paper. And here's the test, and nothing. Zero shadowing, no bleed through whatsoever. So this paper can handle all of these inks. On the other side, absolutely nothing as well. No shadowing at all and no bleed through at all. <clears throat> Here's just a look at how those inks look on the page. And then I decided just to see, because sometimes this can, you know, behave differently on the paper. I decided to go back in with that Papermate Inkjoy Gel 0 0.7 and write the name of each color on top of the brush pen markers just to see if that would affect the shadowing or bleed through on the opposite side of the page. And so we'll flip that over in just a second. The ink looks really nice and there was no feathering on the markers. And then here's just another peek and even with the ink layered over the markers, there was still no shadowing whatsoever, no bleed through whatsoever. It just looks like a brand new blank page. So I noticed when I had closed the pages together that that Noodler's black ink was the only one that apparently hadn't dried completely and it smudged a little on the opposite page. So I'm taking a kneaded eraser here and just rubbing over it just to see if I can pull any of that ink up and it left just the faintest mark on the page. So it got up almost all of that ink and it also left the page very smooth. So, you know, it didn't rub off the finish of the page like some uh, traditional erasers can. So the kneaded eraser works very well on the Archer and Olive paper. 
Now, I took some of the coordinating, just the normal Zebra Mild Liner highlighters and laid them out just to see how they looked. I was not a fan. It was hard for me to get a straight line with that chisel point tip. And the same thing happened here that happens on my Tomoe River paper where the ink kind of pulls a little at the end of the line as you pick your uh, marker up off the page. So I probably won't be using those in this book. And then I decided after that ink test to go in and do the same thing with the Stology notebook. And I noticed when I was um, preparing the test that because the cover is soft, there's a bit of a hump uh, when you get toward the end of the book because of the width of the spine. So I think you'll be able to see what I'm talking about here in just a second. Uh, the left side stamped fine because you had the entire book there to use as a good solid base. It was whenever I tried to stamp out the word test on the right side that the stamp did not come out as nicely or neatly. What I should have done is take another book of a similar width or thickness and put it under the back cover so I had a truly flat surface to stamp on. So here you'll see hopefully what I'm talking about. You can see that hump. So I should have known better, but you know, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> I did end up taking a Pigma Micron and just kind of going over that letter E that didn't quite come through and kind of touching up where the stamp should have been. So I was just trying to show the difference in the height and width there. So I just touched up that little E and it ended up turning out okay. But as you get to the very back of the book, if you're going to do any stamping next to the spine, you need to put some type of base underneath it so I repeated the exact same ink test in the Stology. I didn't, you know, film every single line for you, but I went through and pretty much made an identical ink test with those pens. And I did notice that on the Stology paper, the line variation was maintained with the Flex fountain pen and the Pelican fountain pen. So that was nice. And then I just repeated the exact same process on the right side with those Sharpie brush pens and the Zebra Mild Liner brush highlighters. I think one or two of those may have gotten out of order, but it accomplished its purpose for me with the test. And then I took those same coordinating regular mild liner highlighters and pretty much got the same result. You still get that pooling of the ink on the end. So I decided to go in and just make each test identical. I took that Papermate Ink Joy Gel in black 0 0.7 and just wrote the name of each color directly on top of the markers. And so here we go. Now on the Stalogy, there was quite a bit of shadowing. There wasn't any deep, full bleed through because none of these inks were alcohol-based, but the Noodlers Apache Sunset in particular really almost started bleeding through the page. And here's a close-up so you can see that the shadowing is quite heavy. So this paper is very similar to Tomoe River to me in a lot of ways. And then on the right side, same situation. You can see that um, there's quite a bit of shadowing. And I'll give you another close up here so that you can see that when I layered the ink on top of the highlighters here, it did um, bleed through. You can see several little dots trying to peek through the page. So, you know, it's nice to know how your paper is going to behave and react before you use it in the, you know, in the main part of your book in a spread. 
So apparently the Noodler's Black is just going to take longer to dry in both of these books because the same exact thing happened. <laughs> I had some smudging on the opposite page just on the line where the Noodler's Black was written. So I decided to test this out in the same way we did in the Archer and Olive and just see if this kneaded eraser would do the trick. And it also did not affect the surface of the page. It still feels smooth. And you can see that it pulled up almost all of that ink that had smudged. So that's nice to know that just an art uh, eraser or a kneaded eraser works very well in both of these books. So that's how the ink looks on the Stology. I think the colors look nice on both of the books, so it wasn't like there was a dramatic difference in color alone. But that is it for both of these. So I ended up deciding to go with the Archer and Olive for the Bujo, and I'm going to use the Stology for another purpose. My overall impression is that the Archer and Olive books felt much more appropriate for fine liners and markers instead of fountain pens. And the Stology was kind of the exact opposite. It felt much more appropriate for fountain pens and, you know, less um, appropriate for the gel pens and fine liners and um, markers. They tended to have more bleed through. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see y'all soon. Bye-bye.